Uh, during this hour or so, we will discuss what the possibilities and challenges with VOD are with a look on various issues like uh, holdback times, territories, technical and financial aspects, piracy and the consumer-led marketplace. And I want to start by introducing our panel. Here we have uh, Anders Schoeman from Vodla, then we have Fredrik Stege from Egbont, Bengt Toll, former CEO of the Film Institute, Swedish Film Institute, and then Matthias Norboy from TriArt. And I thought we could start by you telling a little bit about yourself and why you are in this panel. Or what your theory is about why you are in this panel. Start here. Yeah, you can start over there. <laughs> so Anders Sjöman uh, uh, med Vodler, where I'm head of communication. Um, well, and I think I'm here because we show movies online. <laughs> we are a video on demand service. Uh, we license uh, movies and TV series from content owners and we show them online on Vodler or on any of our mobile platforms. Um, and that's basically what we do. In, in which countries? And right now we are in Sweden, Norway, Denmark, Finland. Uh, we are based in Stockholm, so we run everything out of there. And we just opened Spain. Uh, where we are now building the business and will be rolling out in the rest of Europe throughout the year. Okay. Thank you. Eric. Well, hi. Um, well, I'd like uh, it was just said, I'd, I recently changed my job to Ekman, but uh, until recently I was uh, employed with uh, Centropa and Trust Nordisk, uh, which is a film producing company and an international uh, sales agent. And what we've been doing for the past five years is, is we've been licensing directly to VOD uh, platforms throughout the world and we have a lot of uh, experiences with that I think that's I guess why I was invited to come and, and talk a little bit about that. Thanks Bengt. Um, I don't know really. <laughs> <laughs> well uh, I've been dealing with these issues for many years uh, um, together with uh, Henrik Larsson at Chimneypot, uh, when I was at Film Invest eight years ago, we started the first uh, site in Sweden for, for uh, download to own, which was an experiment really to see is it possible to, uh, to make this work technically, uh, is it possible to get uh, a system for uh, so taking all the payments, uh, and we set it up and it all worked, but we didn't get one single film uh, to the site, which is what I think we're going to discuss today. And I've been very interested in how to, um, wh why it's so difficult for the VOD to, to, really, uh, to really deliver something back to the uh, uh, right owners and why it doesn't take off really. Mm. Matthias? Matthias Norborg, um, well, Two days ago, I didn't know that I was going to be in this seminar, but anyway, <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> uh, well, I'm a distributor and, and uh, I worked with... And we're and very happy that you're here. Uh, okay. uh, I've been working with distribution since the uh, beginning of the 80s, and, and uh, I used to have a company called Triangle Film. Uh, I was, I'm also working as a producer at St. Paul Film in Stockholm. And, uh, but uh, about a year ago, we started a new company called TriArt Film. And um, one, of the, one of the ideas for me was to try to find some, some other ways to, to reach an audience. Because of the cinema situation, because of the technical situation. And, and uh, I also wanted to do something else than, than, than the other sites, than the other video on demand services. So, I mean, we started a digital platform called triart.se. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the, the main thing is, is, well, there is a video on demand service, which is, of course, extremely important, but it's also a community. That's what we are building. I mean, we, we try to, uh, to um, first of all, we only, we, we, we only screen the films we like ourselves. And of course, the base of the films is uh, is what we are wh what we are buying, what I'm buying, and uh, it's new films, it's old films, it's catalog titles, and etc. Uh, we have already started to d go day by day on on DVD and VOD. Um, of course, we can't do it on on, on <laughs> when it comes to the to, to the theatrical release because um, there is this four month holdback. Uh, this is something we have to sign with the um, cinema owners. But um, the, the, the idea is, of course, it, it's also that, I mean, we, we, 
we are writing about films, we want to do debate films, we want to discuss films, re re review films. It's going to be a, what we're building or trying to build is a place where you can meet uh, people interested of certain films, of course, can meet and discuss and read about films and watch films. Mm. That's the idea. So it's a more a community than a pure VOD service. Yeah, and we're going to get back to that cur curating role as well later. Um, <coughs> Efe Kekarel, uh, CEO of Mubi.com, uh, a big uh, VOD uh, service, was supposed to be here, but he had to cancel yesterday because due to an illness in his family. Um, he was supposed to do an introduction of the landscape of VOD, but I think we're going to do just fine without him. Uh, and of course, you in the audience are very welcome with uh, questions and, and comments during the whole seminar. You just raise your hand and I'll, I'll give the word to you. Uh, I wanted to start with you, Bengt, actually. The, this fall, you had some time and you did uh, like a private research on the VOD market. C could you tell us about what you did? I, it's, it's a very small research, no, but, but I'm so interested in, in why... why um, why we have this, uh, still have this uh, four-month holdback or this special type of, of window policies. And, and just explain what holdback uh, is. Uh, it's, it's a business model uh, where a film uh, appears in, uh, in a, a series of windows, but it always has to be a couple of months before you, you start in, the, in a theatre and then you you end up in, in other windows. But there is a four-month gap between And the that's a re and regardless that's of the if the film is actually running in the cinema that is long that, or yeah, is that, if that it just runs the, a couple yeah, of weeks. But that's the interesting thing, and that is that period, that black period, actually <laughs> drives piracy. Um, you, you were, we had a seminar yesterday, so for a few of you, this is a, r a remake. But the thing is, it's called artificial scarcity, the fact that you... Um, that you create uh, a certain way to the to the audience or to the market, and um, that means that uh, that worked very well uh, in the earlier days. Every time there was a new device where you can watch films, uh, um, the introduction of the VHS or the DVD, uh, the 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 the, the, the models uh, hold together. Um, they came over it, the distributors and the cinema owners. They, they had a way to fix that, but internet changed everything because now the consumer, in a way, is, uh, is in power. And uh, when this four-month black hole appears, uh, the films are there illegally. And, and this is an interesting system. Um, uh, we say that the... the uh, the industry or the distributors and the cin cinema owners in Sweden say that uh, there are 60 million illegal downloads a year in Sweden. And uh, if we take that figure for a fact, it's, it's a difficult, uh, difficult really to, to, uh, um, to, uh, to control this. But let's say it's 60 million illegal downloads and th that this, you, you say it, take that from the illegal side and make it legal. And let's say that you can pay 100 Swedish kronas for a legal download of a new film, and you have uh, four times the turnover that uh, the, the theater has in Sweden today, with something like 6 billion kronas. Of course, these 60 million downloads, they won't pay for it. But let's say that just half will pay for it, and there's a lot of money there. Why doesn't uh, the, the industry take, the, uh, take this money? Why doesn't they make... Um, uh, the down the illegals the illegal downloads legal so to speak um, I, there is to say that the, the um, distributors and the cinema owners they they uh, together take care of the uh, keep this business model as long as it gives something back uh, and that maybe it's true but it it isn't really a threat to um, the theater if you look at uh, the box office in Sweden last year, uh, and, uh, um, uh, piracy is, is, is a, uh, a blockbuster phenomenon, but if you look at the, uh, the Swedish films that did good in the box office, some of them were pirated more or less immediately, and some of them wasn't pirated until uh, they appeared on DVD. But they show exactly the same pattern in the box office. Uh, Regardless. 
regardless <coughs> of, the, of the piracy or not. So they, they, they make most of their income the first two weekends and, and the, the week in between. And then they drop considerably, and then they stay. And whether they are pirate or not, uh, this pattern appears. And that's, that's an interesting comment to, the, to all the service there is out there saying that VOD isn't a threat to the, the theater. It, it, it isn't a big threat to the theater. It's, it's one more interesting thing, uh, and I think that that um, that what really uh, suffering from this is the art house films. Uh, if you look at the film play, uh, which was uh, the film last year in Sweden, it was discussed not only among uh, critics and and cinema goers or uh, the, the cultural elite. It was a film that entered into the political debate in Sweden. Uh, it started with 14 cop uh, prints, 14 prints in Sweden. And uh, at the time when this was the most talked of of every film, it was down to seven prints. And that's only the main cities? It was in three in Stockholm, one in Gothenburg, one in another university city, uh, and that was all. And it was impossible to see. If, y if you didn't live in one of these few cities, it was impossible to see this film that everybody talked about. And it was blocked out from the possibility to, to, um, to use a, a VOD platform, because there are platforms that gladly would like to, to put that film there. Uh, One interesting thing with that is that the distributor of this film is the big cinema owner. <laughs> so actually they marginalized <laughs> their own film. Thank <laughs> you very much. I d then I didn't have to say that. <laughs> but, but Th this is, I think, the, the most interesting uh, thing with, if you just look at the figures and, uh, and uh, discuss this together with piracy, that, that, was, that was what I did really, mm. looked at all these films. Uh, play is just one example. You can say the same about uh, She Monkeys or last year Seb uh, had a, uh, an Oscar, uh, an Oscar, a Swedish Oscar, a, a Goldbagge, and it didn't exist. Yeah, you can't it see it. Exist. No. And, and there are people out there that really would like to see yeah. these films. So it's both business-wise and, uh, uh, and, and uh, from a cultural uh, perspective, it's uh, incredible and it's stupid. Yeah. There are money to be made from all these films. And I think it's very interesting that you point out that this is uh, art house and blockbusters. And I think it was uh, yesterday or, or the day before that, uh, the Swedish Film Institute released a press release that they once again had like a record number of um, cinema goers in Sweden, over 16 million. And this is a number that stayed for, it's been like that for ages. So it's, I think, it's the thinking same about the threat it's the same of cinema, I mean, it's not really existing. It's, it's like exactly a the monster. Same Europe, but, um, th the figures have stayed for 20, 25 years. Yeah. So what do you think is the, the, is it the cinema owners that are the, the, the bad guys? Is that? <coughs> no, I, I don't think yeah. anyone is a bad, bad, good or bad mm -hmm. here. Of course, if, if you have a business like uh, running theaters, you have to maximize uh, the profit. If you're a distributor, if, you, if you're one of the majors, you have the same. Um, uh, you need to, to maximize your profit. I understand that. The thing is, I don't think they are maximizing it. They are losing money by not using all this new uh, um, possibility to reach the consumer. Um, <laughs> one idea um, that was discussed last year in a workshop in, in, in Cannes, where we were talking about how the, uh, the, the public support systems uh, help or ha don't help uh, the change to in business model, um, there, there were a lot talk about the fact that as long as the majors are paying for the installation of the new di digital equipment in, in the theaters, they will keep this business model because they have to get their money back. As soon as uh, this uh, transition is over... And how long is that going to take? It's going very quick at the moment. Uh, but to so for them to get the money back? Uh, f three years maybe or something like that then they don't see uh, then the majors will just uh, get rid of this model because then they need to make their money somewhere else mm -hmm. on the other hand I mean if, you, if we follow I mean this 
uh, that w what you're saying is actually it doesn't matter because they will get the money anyway into the cinemas because it, it's 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 not you know decreasing the, mm -hmm. the the figures that you have day by day or that you no, no. very close no. but there is another dimension too of course i think and it's it's also that i think there i mean everyone are very frightened because they don't really know uh, and they don't have evidence it was the same in the 80s when the when the d video came mm -hmm. i mean everyone were frightened what is this what is this new technique and how is it going to reflect the cinema figures and so forth um, I, I mean, they're 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 afraid of losing, you know, audience to the cinema. They're also afraid of, of losing uh, the DVD mm. uh, figures because I mean, the, the the first threat to the from the VOD is of course uh, the DVD rental. And in Sweden, the DVD rental has always been very high. Uh, so. Uh, on the but other it's going hand, down very fast at the moment. It's going it? down very fast, of, of course, and, and, and then you ask yourself, I mean, where are those, <laughs> where, where is that audience? Is, yeah, are and they yeah. at the VOD services or are they doing the illegal? Mm -hmm. Of course um, they are, and that, mm -hmm. that's why you have mm -hmm. to, yeah, sure. you have just maybe one or two years mm -hmm. to to get hold of, otherwise this will be... Uh, this would be uh, more or less impossible. But for me, as, a, as an art house film distributor, I, I, I get a little bit even more insulted because, you know, I mean, as, 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 as uh, Bank talked about play, I mean, we had uh, the She Monkeys, the Opplickena, and, and, and I mean, we are working with very, you know, limited uh, films itself, you know, art house uh, films. And, and from the from the beginning we are marginalized when we when we program the films you know at the cinemas we get the rest over so to say in the cinemas and 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 uh, because of the situation uh, there is no negotiation possibility either you, i mean we take what we what we get and we say thank you very and much. we have so ki kind of a monopoly situation <coughs> so yeah yeah right uh, and and uh, we also have to wait four months mm. uh, so it's 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 even uh, i mean we don't get good cinema figures Primarily, I'm, I'm totally, I mean, uh, Ruben Östlund's film before had, I think, like 50,000. 50, this one will get maybe 20,000. Uh, I would say that uh, more or less all films I release would have, would have had about two and a half, three times more, more, more uh, bigger audience five years ago when I, when I had cinemas myself, so I know. <coughs> and, and this is, uh, I mean, to be able to, 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 continue to work with these kind of films, you have to find alternatives. Mm. Uh, I mean, this is a financial, economical uh, way of thinking uh, and, 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 and so on. But it's also what's in there. I mean, why should I do this? I mean, I can, I can buy them to, you know, the films for myself and watch with my friends. But, I mean, there is an audience and how to reach them and how to try to get the system where, where you don't, you know, just put the down <laughs> illegal downloaders, I mean, when, when they get the possibility to, 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 to take home the film. So, I mean, this is what we're yeah. fighting about. Uh, and, 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 um, I was, I was thinking... I would like to ask uh, you, because, I mean, you are working for, for a, a vertical integrated... Uh, I mean, you're, 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 you're S. Svensk in, in Denmark. <laughs> I mean, you, you, have, you, have, you have most of the cinemas and you have the biggest distributions and so forth. How, d how do no, you... No, you're talking about Nordisk Film, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nordisk okay. Trust and mm. Centropa. And yeah, it's, it's yeah. all the same in, yeah. in the eye of the public, I guess. I mean, how, d how do you discuss? Because, I mean, no, no one from Svensk is here. And, and um, at the same time, I mean, they're, they're not only the biggest uh, cinema owners, they're also the biggest uh, DVD d distributors. They're also having the biggest... V they have a very big VOD service and the, the biggest production <laughs> company and so forth. I mean, why stop up the, the VOD? Why, 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 why? Do you have uh, four months in, in Denmark? Or? Yeah, we do. Yeah. Uh, I mean, um, my, my, um, my, my greatest force is not the distribution in, in Denmark. In fact, that, that, that was not so much part of my job. But I think what's interesting is, is some of the, uh, of the tendencies we can see from the films that Trust Nordisk licensed uh, to, to, uh, to um, North American distributors because there you have a completely, uh, 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 entirely different system because I, I would take two, two of, the, of, of, the, of the latest Lars von Trier uh, uh, titles as examples to that because they were bo both released on either day-to-day -day, uh, um, uh, VOD and, 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 and DVD and, on and, the and theatrical day. at the same day. Yeah. And uh, Melancholia, the, the most recent film, was released I think four or even eight weeks before the theatrical uh, uh, release of the film. 
uh, it was I think I think they called it something like home premium theatrical release or something like that, which is on the cable services which you subscribe to as a as a cable subscriber, you can see the film at a at a premium rate. I think it was twenty or even thirty uh, euros dollars, and that made a lot of money for the mm -hmm. film. I mean, the revenue is coming from. And the then DVD. when it came out in the cinema, the price went down. And in the, the price VOD. went down at that yeah. point, I think. Yeah, and uh, but the but the but the point is. When we get rev the revenue statements for that for for, for those for those films, we can see that that there is a big 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 potential for VOD. And uh, I mean, I think in both cases it, it was beyond uh, a, a million US dollars. Uh, so it's so you can see the revenues are there. And we we, we haven't hit that point in 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 Scandin Scandinavia yet. But I think uh, if you manage to 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 to, to provide the, the 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 right services to the to to the consumers, I mean, why not? Yeah. Well, I and, was and, and w just yeah, because, because I mean there is a different system since the, 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 there is a different system. They, they, Absolutely, they're, they're not allowed to have vertical integrated. Uh, I mean, the di distributors don't own the cinemas and so forth. Ah, well, uh, they do to a certain extent. Yeah, mm. but very little. But I mean, but how? D but how do you how do you how do you discuss uh, within Nordisk Trust? I mean, about this issue because th this is a main issue, and and you're the biggest player when it comes to cinema owning and. The rest of the, the of the of the parts. Um, are are you are you ready to? Mm. Huh? Uh, where is this four months coming from? Isn't that the, uh, decided by the film institute who actually? Comes no. The uh, uh, I'll I'll just repeat the question because we're filming the seminar. Uh, where does this four month holdback period originate from? Why is it four months? It, it, it's interesting. It's been six months, uh, and now it's down to four. And if you go to uh, um, in in America, there are there are a couple of the majors are saying it's enough with five weeks or six mm -hmm. weeks. So it's the, it's an agreement between the the uh, distributors and uh, the theater. But in France, for example, it's it's in uh, it's a part of their film law the four months mm -hmm. and uh, uh, so but you you can discuss who inflicted that into that law for example but of course the ones that are pr profiting from it is at the moment the distributors and the theaters mm. i wanted to ask the, you on this you could comment but i wanted to ask you if uh, as a vod provider is this a constant uh, issue or negotiation negotiation that's it's going on with the cinema owners and what's their response to this actually not with the cinema owners but it's a it's a constant day-to-day -day with the content owners and and we've been talking here about the first window and the holdback period to the subsequent windows but there are, are in our world we think of four release windows and there are holdback periods between every one mm -hmm. so first you have cin yeah. cinema then it's four months until it comes out on dvd or blu-ray and nowadays on on vod a uh, normally transaction vod then pay-per-view then it's another nine to twelve months before it comes out on pay TV, uh, your uh, your via sats, etc. Mm -hmm. And then it's another nine to twelve months before it comes out on free to air TV, your commercial channels or your public service. So that's a process of four years, mm -hmm. and and we have to take the title from the content owner and ask where in the life cycle is it? Can we show it? For how long can we show it? Uh, and th this has effects for the consumer. So for instance, Harry Potter eight or sorry, 7B, mm -hmm. opened uh, this summer, and we had a lot of people wanting to see the, f the full Harry Potter series. And we had one through five. And s one through five and 7A, but not six. <laughs> because six happened to be in its life cycle in the pay TV window when we're not allowed to have it. And of course, we had a lot of angry consumers calling on us then saying, why the hell don't you get the entire thing? Are you insane or stupid? Mm. Uh, but we have titles for a certain period, and then they go over to the next window. So all the, but of, uh, again, these are all, this is nothing set in law. This, these are contractual agreements mm. between the content provider. Who and is driving this? Who is, who wants to have this system stable? I think, I think for the system has been in place. It came into place as a way for risk minimization from, from uh, film producers. This is a way to, I mean, the old rule of thumb, you make 10 movies, one is good, two are decent, the rest are duds, but you still want to make money on all of them. So you try to find as many ways along the life cycle where you can milk, it, milk money out of it. So this has been a risk minimization reason for the industry. Um, and to help the industry move into a digital world, 
we have to help them solve that risk minimization problem. Mm. How can we get more, the money that they used to get from DVD, which I think is going to die, how the money that they are getting from pay TV, which I think is going to change into VOD, and we're seeing it already, and the money that they're getting from pay t for regular TV, how can we get that into VOD? Mm -hmm. uh, if we can solve that, I think this VOD explosion is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And cinema, I don't think, has to worry at all, just mm -hmm. like Bengt said. So mm -hmm. Film är best på bio. It's, mm -hmm. it's unique. Yeah, uh, it's just that cinema is not always the best for me when I want to see it. But what is needed for this big jump to VOD? I mean, for example, with the digital cinema, we're talking about it, uh, before, there was so much talk about it for so many years, and then suddenly, blam, it went from 35 millimeter to DCP very fast last year. Uh, when is this going to happen with VOD, and what are the steps that need to be in place? I think I, I think you have to show up everything that, uh, for instance, Bank is uh, talking about. And what about, Frederick I mean. said about melancholia. Yeah, how it made yeah. money. I mean, I mean all, all because we pretty much agree that it's a good thing and, and the filmmakers and everyone else, distributors, can get the money. But how, how will this happen? We, we look at three trend, trends and, and try to follow them. If, when all three are going to happen at the same time, I think that's the explosion. So mm -hmm. the three things are, we're looking at bandwidth into homes. Um, the internet connection. The internet yeah. connection. So when the, we're going to get one gigabyte uh, fixed lines or 4G. And when is... And that's the rolling out right now in Sweden, at least. Uh, and what about the rest of, of Europe? Much, can much more behind. Yeah. Um, we're looking at connected TVs or how you get internet into the living room. We're in the home entertainment business. We need to replace the DVD and the TV channel, the broadcast channel. So we look at connected TVs or smart TVs or or how m how people get internet into their homes. Our core users are the ones who have thrown out all their boxes and replaced it with a, a computer. Uh, and they use uh, VOD services, and they use SVT Play, etc. So we look for that. So that's home home usage. Uh, and the third one is actually when are the existing uh, windows going to drop even more <laughs> in price and in what they can pay mm. uh, to the content owners. DVD is bleeding, but not bleeding enough to have to change yet. Um, so I think the movie studios are seeing a decrease in, 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 in revenue, uh, but they're not seeing enough of a decrease to actually have to change yet. Uh, you had a, another theory with two different ones. It's yeah, it's some of them the same. I, it's it's the same same actually. Um, it it all has to. Uh, uh, when you, at the end of the day, it's about business models, and everybody is now counting and seeing where can I get some, where, where can I get, best, get the best revenues. The idea that the, the majors will will go will lead this uh, uh, transition. Um, it's a lot of people thinking that that's what's going to happen when they have got the money back from uh, from paying for the transition into digital cinema. Um, it's all. It can also be like when Sky uh, bought uh, uh, bought into sports, for example. There was one uh, one v leading actor that just t took it all and changed the whole, the whole pattern. Um, S someone that we can't see today is coming in and, and doing all this. There are there are too many platforms uh, in Europe, for example. There are, there are a couple of hundreds, and they they we need them to consolidate in in a way. And we also so I like with the iTunes. Uh, I think so, and I, I think that we need curators like what you are trying to do. That that actually is a, like a portal that can can bring uh, the consumer into what's in the market. So it's a lot of different things that I, I think will must happen. But the, the most important thing is it got to come some money back to the content owners from from uh, VOD, and it mm. doesn't today. You had a comment, Henrik? Well, I mean, <coughs> in my opinion, it's, it's, it's kind of a catch-22 because you have to you have to provide a product to the consumers that, that 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 the consumers find appealing and right now i think that's 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 kind of the biggest issue right, right now i mean I've, i know a lot of people uh, and also people from the film industry who signed up for netflix they got a, uh, an american uh, ip address changed their vpn I, I don't know exactly how that happens the and then they signed up for, for netflix paid uh, 8 bucks a, week, uh, a month and had access to a lot of content and why did they do that because the content available 
in Denmark or in Sweden or in Norway was just too bad. Mm. The services are too not bad. M- m- not too wide enough for w- not enough that? titles. No, not enough titles. That's yeah. one. The 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 consumer friend friendliness is 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 horrible at some of the sites, and 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 yeah, as just like the usability of them. What's that? Sorry? You mean the usability? How easy it is? How to you use na- it? How, 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 navigate. How, how, how does it look? Yeah. Is it attractive when when I? D- do do you feel attracted to to put five bucks on a, uh, uh, to to purchase a film? In many cases, no, you don't because the the the, the site looks horrible, and and also from a, a rights holder perspective at, at Trust, Trust Notice, uh, I mean we were con- contacted constantly from from platforms all over the world, and 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 they they were interested in acquiring the, the rights uh, uh, for the films, and you could just see when 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 you entered into the sites, it was just bad. And and you have to offer a product, which is 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 a nice product. Once that starts to happen, once 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 the, the platforms provide services that bring in money and 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 bring money back to the rights holders, they're going to be attracted to to provide to pro- 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 provide the rights. And I think it's 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 a, it's a slowly it's a slowly uh, it's it's a steps and it's a catch twenty two. Mm. Um, you need you need to provide films, but but the, the right holders need to to have have money. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and to take Netflix, <coughs> Netflix as as an example, they they pay up front. So as a rights holder, good or bad, but but you you're not you're not worried whether your film is going to perform at the site. Yeah, because it you just, doesn't you matter. You just receive a mm. flat fee, and and then you know you you, you get the money, and um, and that's that's a, a way to at least to uh, acquire rights mm-hmm. for films. Uh, I would assume Mo- most most platforms are not paying minimum guarantees or upfront fees, and that's kind of another step that you have to cross. Uh, and then you get well. for each viewing, you get. Some and then you more get money, yeah. Well, yeah. Then you, then how, you get how does a, it a work share. on on uh, Vodler? So we so we we make money in in three ways. We do uh, pay per view, so you rent a movie. That's for the, the the most current titles, the one that then incidentally are with the DVD. And how much do they cost? Thirty seven Swedish. Mm-hmm. Um, and then for the older movies, uh, the ones that are four years or older, uh, some are cheaper to rent and some are uh, free to the user, but paid. Uh, we get revenue through advertising, mm-hmm. so a TV model. And then we also have a membership subscription where you pay a monthly fee if you want extra And how features. much is that? 79. And then you get you don't get the advertising for the 2000 films that are p- with advertising. But you, you still have to pay for each of the new titles. So, yes, you still yeah. have to pay for each of the new titles. Because I was thinking about the, the cash flow. You were talking about Netflix and uh, the the uh, president of Fox Television Studios was here at another seminar yesterday. And he said that the nec- Netflix um, subscription is $15 now. Which is uh, roughly ten euros, and then you get for th- for the streaming only it's eight bucks. Yes, oh, it's only eight. Okay, so it, I mean, regardless of which uh, sum it is, I think it's unbelievably cheap. If yeah. that actually makes you access all of the content, but and but I was wondering, uh, why is the the price put on that level? Because I think consumers would be ready to pay more for a monthly sc- subscription if th- there's a lot of content. But, and n- then but you Netflix, we have to remember, they don't have the current releases. Okay. Th- they so have. The they have. The th- they are. They have positioned themselves as a, com- a competitor to the pay TV. So okay. their titles are bar- by default three years or older. Okay. So w- when we look at them, we say that that's the catalog that we have that is either cheaper f- to pay, pay per view or that we have against advertising. Mm. But it's just different ways of, of, of getting money in. Then we, of course, share, to your initial question, we have share back. There's a revenue share. Yeah. Whatever money we make on each uh, rent but or each yeah. viewing, we share back to the content owner. Yeah. Because this is crucial. I, it must compete with the theater. It must be... Uh, as close to the yeah. premiere as possible. So how, many w- how many weeks do you think would be like the optimal? I mean, uh, no, none. Before, <laughs> <laughs> even before. Yeah. Uh, uh, and then you could take a price that is the price of a cinema ticket. Or more. Yeah. yeah the surveys show that people are, are, are prepared to pay more than the cinema ticket mm. if you, you get it at the same time. Mm. Well, that, that's exactly what I just said. That 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 is what what people are ready to to pay in. in 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 the in the U.S., the p- f- 20, 30 bucks mm. for 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 a film which has not been released in the theaters mm. yet. That's that's and quite steep, in my opinion. But but people still pay that. And and you, th- uh, there's been some research made in the Nordic countries on on uh, how much people are willing to pay. Could you tell us a little yeah, bit about I, that I, thing? The, the, the one of the best surveys done 
was done last year uh, in just in the Nordic countries, and uh, there were questions asked: uh, Would you would you stop going to the cinema if if you got new if you could get the new films at the same time? No, we would still go to the cinema, but we would see more films. And how much were they prepared to pay? 240 Swedish kronas if they, you could get the film at the same time. Mm. And I think other surveys, uh, one of the providers in Sweden has done one, it says more or less the same. Mm. But it has all to do with new films, with film at the same time as they come in the theatres. Mm. TV is, of course, driving a lot of this. I mean, we talk feature films here primarily, but f the TV uh, dramas are pushing this as well. Yeah. All the American TV dramas. I mean, the so I'm sitting, uh, an anecdote, sitting uh, at a dinner table a, a couple of weeks ago with some friends. We all went to school together. We're middle-aged, fairly well-income, all with kids. Nobody has time to the go to the movies. So we talk about what do we actually see, and we see TV series. And uh, everybody was still talking about Mad Men. So when is Mad Men on Sunday nights? And I said, no, no, no. It's on weeknights, because I remember coming home after, after work and watching it. No, no, they say Sunday nights in the US, because Monday morning it's on Pirate Bay, by Monday evening it'll be translated too. These are middle-aged people again, mm. fairly well off, we can pay our way. We've bought Toy Story 3 seven times mm. already to make sure we have it. Mm. So it's not a question of, of not wanting to pay, but it's a question of availability. Mm. Uh, TV series, I think, is driving this, and, and if, if mm. movies can catch on to the fact that this is a payment-ready generation mm. that just want it. So if you try to recap a little bit, um, uh, it's about that there has to be one place where you go as a consumer and that place has to work and then you need the right old owners to give the new movies to that place. Mm. That, that's what's, what's needed. Um, I wanted to, to talk about uh, the curating role a little bit that we already mentioned because you've decided to have your own platform and not be part of an already existing platform. Uh, w why did you make this decision? Because then that requires that people actually know about your site, not only about the titles that they want to see. In the same way as I, uh, you know, once in the um, in the nineties and the beginning of the two two thousand, had my own cinemas. I mean, I wanted to create uh, an environment that uh, was um, linked to the films I am picking. So I mean, from the first time we said. When we when we started this activity with TriArt, we s said, "Well, I'm buying the films I want to buy because I mean, <coughs> you know, keep up the tradition of triangle film for, for before and and uh, but we have to find new ways to to reach the audience and because of the c cinema system, I mean, I, we just could say, well, I mean, we can we can of course show them in the cinemas, but in a very different way from before, because they get uh, we we can't decide about opening dates. We can't uh, decide about uh, what cinemas and 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 there is no negotiation possibility, etc. So uh, I mean, this is also why we started this site because we wanted to to take the you know the the cinema way of thinking over to the to to the digital platform and create. Uh, 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 a place where, and I agree totally with this. You know, I mean, we try to actually. We, we, what we are trying to do is create a place where where people like to go to. I mean, it's it's we we put a lot of energy into to um, to um, um, how to you know present the films. Uh, a lot of you can read a lot about the films. Uh, you can discuss about the films. You can debate about the films, etc. And you have the 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 the, the VOD. Um, one problem is, of course, that they will always be, I mean, we, we, we have tried to link together the DVD and, and the VOD, so I mean, they will be open on the VOD service after four months. Mm. But we can't break that because we have signed with, uh, with the cinema owners. And this is, of course, uh, something, uh, I, I, especially since I, I, I only work with art house films, it's, it's, it's a problem. Because I mean, we get all these questions, and 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 the films get very old very fast, and and uh, it's also illegal <laughs> downloading on on, on art house films, uh, not not in the same proportions maybe as as some other blockbuster films, but it's still a problem. Mm. And so, of course, I mean, we would like to have it totally free, and I think it wouldn't, especially since we get these quite small programming. Uh, we get these small cinemas, these small screening rooms, and, and, and uh, we are, I mean, the films that I work with, and 
some other companies in Sweden or Denmark uh, who are working with art house films, they are marginalized in the cinemas. Mm. <laughs> and, and, uh, and then uh, this is a possibility. So, I mean, what, what I try to do is actually, I mean, what we try to do is, is getting this community where the, the, where the VOD service is a part of it. Mm. And it's also very important for us not to have too many films <laughs> because uh, we want to be very, I mean, we are saying that. We want to be exclusive in the sense that you should have a possibility to, to, to have an overview of what we have. It should be easy to find films. Uh, we are, of course, uh, giving recommendations. We are leading them, you know, the audience, whatever they want to, but not more than four or 500 titles. That's our... Well, one thing that I was uh, thinking about, of course, there are, are obvious perks to a cinema release. Um, you get all the reviews, th only the, the cinema releases are reviewed, uh, the debate around films, you get the, the attention and, of course, revenue. But uh, uh, couldn't it be possible to just skip this whole stage, uh, just go right on VOD and that's where your film is? Of course. Mm. And, we, we, we and wouldn't we that, I mean, then you wouldn't have all the holdback problems anymore. You could just yeah. do it like that. I just want to add, because Try Art is, is branding itself, because Art House movies isn't that big, so we, we need it so you can find them, because then we drown in another place that we're not known. Mm. So, so that's another reason to have a, your own VOD. And I think we will see more of those niche. Side, there would be janger or movies or anything but that could also be done as in in a kind of a curating role in a bigger site yeah, yeah, absolutely uh, done, uh, where you, then you would know okay i just go to this the equivalent of itunes and then i jump into the horror window or i jump into the time I, I think that's one one important point to make there because i think s still uh, as it is now at least to have a film re uh, released theatrically is, 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 is still a big marketing stunt. You will have the film reviewed. It, it, it will, it, it, the, the, the attention will, will be brought to the people. So if you release the film on VOD alone and nothing else, I think you will have a very hard time promoting the film and, and drive, it dri mm. it, it, it drive uh, enough revenues. I think the two cases I mentioned before with the last one, Trio titles, the revenues on VOD would never have been that high if the film ha it would have not been been released uh, theatrically so it's it's it was it's it's it's, it's still a marketing tool mm. uh, in my opinion but that's that's why that's why we Anders was yeah. but actually a question to you so how come as a as a media uh, journalist and as a film yeah. reviewer how come you don't review the straight I to vod i was just going to say yeah. that uh, of course i'm here as a moderator yeah. but i'm also a film critic and i do think uh, it's also like the fault of of uh, the journalists and the critics and, and how come because there's a whole ecosystem here in in media that's set up to to I cover cover theatrical releases yeah. last uh, the only one i've seen do it in media is jens petterson and often lauded to put together his best straight to vod yeah which we took as a cue because um, and then we're trying yeah. to push those as well i, I think that but should definitely be done more yeah. but how come I, mean, I haven't understood I that anyway I, yeah. I don't really know it's all business model uh, that are still in place of course a lot of bloggers are are blogging like about the new releases on pirate bay for example uh the best new movies that are out but not really silver related but i think we shouldn't forget the filmmakers that really want to have the films also in the theater uh, yeah, that's absolutely. that's maybe the, the most important thing here but mm. the, what's so stupid when it comes to art house films is the fact that okay you have your you have your, your theatrical release you have your premiere and then you're locked in for for four months or more you should have a flexible attitude and i think that is something that could start and who is you now. that should have this flexible attitude i think attitude. that for example look at a small uh, community like sweden where there all these people that actually are deciding on uh, how we are dealing with things are sitting at the same table when they are around the film agreement. You, you, there would, must be a way to discuss the fact that some of the art house films should not at all stay uh, in, in the black box for so long, mm -hmm. for example. And there, but there, there was just the new film agreement. Could you maybe say this is national, of course? No, I, I just meant that if people are prepared to sit around the table, there would be possibilities to discuss uh, even 
even if we know that both the cinema owners and the distributors uh, are totally against this flexibility uh, at the moment and they, that they, they stick to the, uh, uh, to the window policies. Hopefully, with examples, we have a lot of examples on how it works, it could be possible to discuss it. And there are people saying around in, uh, when we are discussing this in Europe that uh, uh, the, the, um, uh, the public uh, support systems actually uh, not meaning it, but still keep the old system there. Uh, we have a possibility that maybe it's easier here than otherwise to discuss it mm. Other, elsewhere. We had a it. comment or question. I just want to. I, I work with Nordic Film and Acquisitions, and of course we are we are we are doing the uh, the distribution and all the windows. I just want to make a case in point because I think it's it's relevant to say that we need a flexible system, but it should also be title dependent. I mean, Absolutely. each title yeah. should be Absolutely. treated the same way. I mean, there's no. I don't. I don't see the logic in that we have an art house film that, for instance is running for two weeks and then you have to wait four months. Why couldn't we get some flexibility in there? I'm not so sure about the, the, the day and day, the UD and theatrical release, and the question all comes down to availability and who has the guts to te test something. Because I'm, we're releasing Snapper Cast later this year, and I would be very nervous to do a, a, a theatrical and UD simultaneous release, because, I mean, of course, we had these, of course, uh, uh, research that has been done which movie? Sorry, which movie? Uh, Cyber Cash 2, for instance. Mm -hmm. And why, why would you be nervous? That did 600,000 admissions. I would be nervous what, what, what happens. Would I still get you know, 600,000 admissions at Cooley and still make a really good profit? But is, is at the same time? Is, I mean, I would probably look at that more in the, in the old system, but I would have other titles that would be much more flexible. The reason I'm reacting because people always saying always oh, the <coughs> that's always you know, keeping those old windows in place. But the question here is actually mostly it's the cinemas. It is yeah. absolutely. Charlotte, it's also linked to the the financing of films today. So it's from uh, she is from the Swedish Film Institute. Sorry, Charlotte Denmark, production at the Swedish Film Institute. This is tightly linked to the current financing model. How, you fi how the producer is financing the film. Because at least in Sweden, I'm, I believe it's the same thing, uh, same everywhere, 20 to 25% of a film's budget comes from pre-buys. So these different windows actually put in money in advance in a film's budget. You get maybe 2 million crowns from, uh, from a distributor, and that's income that they believe that they will have and you have pre-buys from uh, free TV and also from paid TV. And that money is still not in place in the new <coughs> windows. And that's, I, that is a, a, a thing that is slowing down this whole evaluation also because the producers are also uh, holding on to the old models because it's the only way they can finance their films at the moment. So we also need to see, it's kind of a catch-22. We Again. need to see a situation where the new windows can also be part of the financing of films. So you you would be asked for maybe a couple of many millions as a kind of MG. So yeah, exactly, and we would give that money, but then we would be, of course, be tempted, like all the existing windows, to say, oh, we want it exclusively. And uh, this, again, this, this exclusive window, I think, is what's just paving the way for the pirates and, and killing it. There are so many other, many other ways. So I hope we don't f fall for that uh, temptation. That's actually a question, because today, because of the exclusivity, the pay TV window is prepared to pay somewhat for, ha for having the film, and the free TV window is prepared to pay. So, so will you also be prepared to pay? Absolutely. When? Uh, as soon as we make a little profit. We're still a young company. As soon as we get more films. As, as, as soon as we get more. So it's, again, it's a catch-22 for us, too. We are, we're a young company. We're two years old, so we're still in a startup phase. But we are, of course, looking at what the bigger U.S. giants are doing. So Netflix just did their own first original programming. With David exactly. Fincher and Kevin yeah. Space. And Hulu is doing the same thing. Uh -huh. So we, I'm actually trying to reach out to Netflix right now to see if we can license their VOD content for our platform. See if they're ready to actually start acting as a, as a distributor. Uh, that's they a, a they wouldn't be allowed to do that, I think. They wouldn't. Uh, no. I don't yeah. think they have the rights to do that. But mm. well, well, yeah. For the for the what would they produce? Yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah. 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 yeah.
their own production. You had another comment. Also, it all comes down again to availability. We are saying it does. It's not picking up. VOD is not picking up. But it is. <coughs> it is picking up. I mean, and with <coughs> iTunes and PlayStation coming into the market, a lot of things will happen during the next year. Sure. Which even more, I think, an issue to discuss is whether or not what happens in the future. Will the consumer only have these uh, SVOD solutions or? Uh, TVOD, would you pay electronic selfie? Would you pay to own a film? Would you actually not having the film, you know, as a DVD that you buy and putting it in your, in your somewhere in your living room to show? Will you still be able to do that when everything's just ac accessible so easily, or you just rent it when you need it? Because if the last thing happens, I mean, we are lacking a huge revenue that we're getting. Well, it's declining today, but we don't have that. from DVD. And yeah, mm. that's that's a problem. That's a problem from the producer point of view, and that's a problem from the distributors with the MG point of view. But I, I think absolutely, I think download to own, own or electronic software or whatever you want to call it is which, which is industry jargon for buying, <laughs> which is buying a film, a permanent transaction. The, what we see in the markets, where we, where Trust Notice has been has been active, absolutely, people they 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 don't necessarily need an ownership. They if they can access a, a film. Everywhere and, and uh, films are going to be more accessible and broadband I I increasing, etc. And p people don't want to to, to 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 own anything. If it's somewhere in the cloud, I mean, I mean, these days, I mean, people are not. What about the CDs? Very few people actually like having the CDs around there. I mean, you can just it's on Spotify somewhere. I mean, if that's happening on film, I think. Well, and and I, I think it, that it is what's going to happen. And that's that's the I mean that's the major concern. Mm. If if Spotify, if Spotify and Wimp taught us anything, it was availability over ownership. Um, that said, there are a lot of differences between music and film, so there's still room for ownership, I think, more in film. But. You had a comment, Sam? Yes, Sam uh, Rebanov, <coughs> Maven Films. We probably distribute films in a different market in Russia and former Soviet Union. So first, I missed the beginning. I wanted to ask who imposed this four months uh, holdback on uh, VOD in Sweden? Agreement between the distributor and the cinema. Yeah. Okay, because in Russia it's going to be a different situation. It's like free wild market, so it's only between us distributors, cinemas, and the right owners. And now we started to release most of our art house titles day to day, and we got uh, for that we got serious MGs from the VOD operators, and it helps us actually to increase our theatrical distribution because. We, we know that our for you know for art house films we have very very very, very modest P and budgets. So basically, we can release the films on the money which we get from VOD. So they pay us basically to release the film theatrically, to get all these reviews, to, all, to get all the advertising, and so we started to release films like every second week, because we know that okay, we, we have no risk on releasing it. We can. We can release films and then we release them simultaneously on VOD. And so far, uh, no cinemas complain. Actually, they see that they still can make money. Mm -hmm. For some bigger films, we have like two or three weeks uh, holdback. Like we just released Dangerous Method, we are discussing three weeks holdback. But it's a flexible system that you discuss each title separately. Yeah. Right yeah. Uh, and what, what and what what's the statistics? <laughs> I mean, do you have any? I mean, uh, have, have they lost, uh, have, have the, the cinema figures gone down? Well, actually, this year we have in actually increased admissions on cinema, now art house titles. Than, I mean, this year, 2011. I mean, it was much better year than 2010. And uh, we started this day to date in 2011. So I don't, there is no, I don't think there is a correlation, but at least it didn't kill the, the theater distribution. Because all these titles, are available instantly on pirate base or on dozens of pirate sites. It's very hard to fight, and I think uh, our film distribution is bleeding much more from the piracy than, uh, let's say, blockbuster films. Because blockbuster they get attracted with huge uh, spectacle with three D effects, yeah. and also let's say pirates over Caribbean, maybe two hundred and fifty thousand people downloaded illegally, but like in Russia, two million people would go, like five million people would go and see it. So they would lose like five percent of the revenues. For art house film, I'm happy when I have like three, four thousand admissions, but maybe ten or twenty thousand downloaded the film. Like I checked on uh, Snapper Cash, or like seven thousand downloads on just one site, and we only had two thousand admissions. So, like they, uh, 
the piracy consumes like 80 to 90 percent of our potential revenues. But when we work with uh, legitimate VOD sites, there are big organizations like biggest VOD sites is owned by Gazprom, which is like Europe's biggest company. So they have lots of money, lots of resources to fight piracy, to police internet. So for us, and that's how we persuade the right holders to give us this no, no holdbacks, because we tell them anyway it will be in the internet, but at least we have a very mighty ally to help us to fight the pirates. So that's uh, how it works. And uh, yeah, we got all the library, and I think it, it helps search for distribution too. Okay, thanks for that comment. That's interesting that that's the situation in, in Russia that is completely different than here. Um, Yes, you. Uh, one comment. Good evening, Bakhtinas. My name. Uh, I'm responsible for uh, TV services and VOD at uh, Telia Sonera. Uh, we have discussed uh, OTT VOD services here, um, but I just uh, wanted to c uh, comment a little bit on that you can really get high quality VOD uh, with our IPTV services. You can watch 3D movies and you can watch high definition movies. And if you can do that and you can also get the movies earlier, we know as a fact from our customers that they're really willing to pay a lot more for watching a movie uh, than, 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 than today. So I totally agree with the gentleman in the panel. Uh, we would really like to see uh, that we can, that we can uh, make this whole back period shorter. I think the whole industry would gain from it and that we can really grow the business uh, by doing that and, and to discuss investments in movies and stuff is, is obviously something that we are very interested in, uh, in uh, doing also. Uh, can I then ask you to bring something back to uh, Telia Sonera, uh, which is one of the biggest providers uh, in Sweden, uh, uh, that maybe you should come uh, come to the table and discuss uh, participation in the agreement. You were there in the beginning, but, but uh, you, you're not there now. But you can also, for example, pay up MGs for new films. That could be an interesting way to, to change this if you do want the films But she, she just said they would be she willing to discuss that. that so yeah, yeah, but yeah. you haven't done that yet. We have uh, discussed it in, in several <coughs> cases, but so far we are not getting the, the, right, uh, the right conditions. Well, from uh, <laughs> until <laughs> some weeks ago, <laughs> it was impossible because you needed to have a first theatrical yeah, release. I <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> it's still there. Yeah. I think we need to, to wrap this up. Um, yes? Question to Matthias, I'm just getting back to the beginning of where the discussion started. So, let's say you have a film that uh, opens today, today is Friday, and you see that um, the first week it doesn't open, and you put it on your own uh, VOD service next week next week and what what happens I mean, what, what happens to the your relation with uh, with the cinema owners or are there sanctions that you will get fined for or is it a secret i don't know i haven't try tried it, try it man well i'm i'm uh, i'm the type of person <laughs> that will try you know i mean uh, I, i've already I've already had uh, exclusive uh, i mean the, the 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 last film of claude chabrol the last one Bellamy, we had a direct uh, VOD uh, DVD um, opening on, and uh, except from the media who didn't cover it at all, uh, and now the media, <laughs> they don't. Evidently, they don't care about <laughs> Claude Chabrol, uh, <laughs> or they don't uh, think it's a real film if it's if it opens on on VOD and, and DVD. But of course, we will um, uh, we will uh, we have a lot of plans when it comes to um, um, try this. On the other hand, I mean, I'm not against, uh, I mean, for me, it's of course important to have a good relationship with the cinema owners or the cinema owner uh, and um, <laughs> of, of, of man, many reasons. And I'm, I'm, I mean, for me, it's also sometimes it's, it's good with uh, some hold back, maybe not four months, <laughs> but, but uh, a period. But it's important, of course, for, for, for the promotion. So, I mean, uh, if I, of the film, and, and uh, if, I, um, if I release it day by day, or one week after, or two weeks after, um, of course, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid of uh, that I won't get, you know, my films mm. programmed in the future. Thanks. I'm, I'm positive you won't get it. Bec uh, remember what happened when Stockholm Film Festival wanted to uh, they, uh, have one of the rookie films. Uh, they wanted to uh, uh, put it on um, uh, Telia's uh, their their film uh, service at the same time as it was screened in the festival. 
and uh, uh, the cinema owners said that uh, they wrote an open letter. Yeah, they wrote no, but and, and they also said that uh, you the festival wouldn't get any of the cinemas uh, if they got through with this. So I think there are sanctions. And at that time, it didn't even have a distribution in Sweden. No, no. So yeah. I think it was even uh, too much. But I'm 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 quite positive. I think it will. Uh, I think it will be a change. I mean, the, I, I think what we go through now is is what we went through in the 80s and uh, when there were other technical changes. And when it comes to this um, whole back period of four months, it will, I mean, it was not so long ago, it was six months, so uh, next time it will be two months, etc. And also the cinema owner in Sweden, in a way, it's also the, have, have big interests in the other windows too. Mm. Uh, actually the biggest interests, <laughs> because they are the biggest in all windows. Mm. So um, I think there will be a change. And I think, uh, I think also I want to underline, I mean, what's the most important thing is that you have this flexibility, that you can discuss title by title. Because there, there. I mean, anyway, uh, for the of the films I we are working with, um, every film has its own uh, possibility. You yeah. Know? Um, sometimes it's good with some holdback. Sometimes it's not. Mm. Sometimes you can have a, you go with VOD before the theatrical, etc. I mean, there, there are al always different possibilities. Mm. Perfect. No, well, it's uh, just on a final note because we've been talking a lot about domestic or local distribution mm. here. Uh, but I think, what, and I, I'm kind of, or was wearing the international glasses, and, and what, what we've been, been seeing, uh, at least from a right holder's perspective is, and I especially from a Scandinavian right holder's perspective is, films which have not had any distribution at all internationally <laughs> have now, ha now has a chance to be watched and, 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 and screened from VOD platforms all over the world. And, and what we did in, in Trust Notice is we built up a set of, digitized all the content, and, and Instantly, you can just deliver films to a, a, a VOD platform in China or United States or Netflix, whatever. And and it's from a right host perspective, VOD is 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 very interesting because it's so it's it's so easy and it, it's 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 you will see revenues that you would never have a chance <laughs> back in the in the in the analog days, so to so to speak. And that's we haven't discussed that at all, but I think it's 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 a, an, an important note. Uh, to an and it's also a make. positive thing, so I think uh, we well, can uh, uh, stop with that. Yeah. It's perfect. <laughs> it's all. It's all been <laughs> negative. No, it. No, it hasn't. Not. But but, um, but that's, there are that's, challenges. That's very. That's where I, I at least see a lot of potential because the, the, it's so easy to 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 distribute uh, across borders. Uh, it's just an FTP uh, FTP uh, uh, wire, and 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 the files are in. Japan or in <laughs> Korea or, or, or whatever, and a lot easier than moving a 35 millimeter print. Mm. So, and and we've been seeing quite nice results with with, with that for films that never had any uh, distribution at all okay. before. The final positive note is that we're having this seminar here on when is VOD going to really explode, not if. Yeah, yeah. Two years ago, this would have been an if. Yeah, mm -hmm. and discussion. and yeah. just let's make like a competition when. <laughs> What's your guess? And how, how do you define that, of course? Yeah, no <laughs> there can no be no winner, but yeah, I mean, are we talking year? November 3rd. This year? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it is exploding already, I yeah. think. Somewhere, some, in some places. We see that the, the first uh, flexible release is next year in Sweden. Okay. Mm Perfect. Thank you for coming, and thank you for participating. Don't, don't.